And with just those simple steps, we've successfully created software with AI agents and deployed it to a live website link. Can AI agents really build out a full-blown software? In today's video, we're gonna be checking out Data Button here, which got a brand new update that allows AI agents to create out your entire software. Therefore, the objective for today's video is simple. Can these agents really build out a software? Let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out a new update by Data Button. They hit me up and they're like, yo, Corbin, we got a pretty big update here that shows a new way of creating an app. And I'm like, okay. Sounds cool. Let's go into it. Today's video is sponsored by Data Button. Now, what's really cool about this is that everything I'm gonna show you in today's video is available now, so you can click it in the description down below. I got an early access demo to it, and I will say two major things really stood out to me. The new user interface and abilities to interact with these AI agents creating software. And the second one that was just like, okay, this is really cool, is the ability for us to associate labor and quote unquote tasks to these AI agents rather than just doing like a one prompt and then it just gets going this will make more sense as we get into the building process of today's app but for now what are we even building corbin i went ahead and created a wireframe of what we are building today the app is going to be called mimic mimic is an ai powered platform that lets users input reference content e.g tweets product descriptions from a particular brand and generate new copy that retains the brand style while incorporating the user's personal twist. Essentially, the idea is that we take any brand and output similar type of content. So for example, Wendy's, I know we all love Wendy's, especially the Frosties. And the idea would be like, for example, Wendy's tweeting, thank you, Mr. Beast, can't believe we're getting TikTok banned before GTA 6. Like the more sarcastic, more edgy type of tweets that we see from Wendy's, I wanna see that with this AI software we're about to create. Therefore, then we could use any Twitter account or any social media profile or any business content and regurgitate that with Mimic AI. Oh, and there you go. If I see my shadow, you get six more weeks of a vanilla Frosty. The best part of Wendy's is gotta be the Frosty. Put your fries in it, trust me. So the first part here will be description. So let's go to put that little summary I outlined earlier. I'm gonna paste that right there, hit continue. Now the next part that's really cool here is we can upload our wireframe right here. So I made that wireframe, it's a PDF. I'm simply gonna click this and there we go. Mimic AI copywriter.pdf. This gives a ton of context of who we're targeting the platform for, everything about our platform. Think of this like when you're drawing on the whiteboard of like your software idea, you put this all in one doc, upload here, hit continue. Now we have a really cool part here about share your design inspiration. And what we can do here is we can simply go to any type of brand we like, take screenshots of their web app slash software, place them here. So let's say the inspiration I wanna give is Stripe. What I'll do is I'll simply go to different parts of the Stripe UI here and I'll just screenshot. Screenshot one, screenshot two, or does I screenshot three or the dry with this? All we need to do is come back to data button and simply drag here. Don't need any special naming as all we're really caring about at this part is purely the design and how it looks. Hit continue. Now this next part right here is very, very powerful for two major reasons. First part is this is basically setting your baseline. Like if we're building a house, we need a good foundation. Therefore, we need to identify very specific stuff that we want to be integrated into our application that are just fundamental. So we have things like auth for Firebase auth, database for Firestore, scrolling down here, our payment method, whether it's Stripe or Lemon Squeezy, storage could be Firebase storage or Superbase storage and so on. Now, one thing I wanna point out here is that depending on what platform you like best, go with the same for all the integrations. This is gonna make it easier. So for example, if you're like Corbin, I don't like Firebase, that's fine. If you're gonna do super base off, click super base here, here, and then all the way down here as well. Just keep it the same. It's gonna make your life 10 times easier. What this does though, is that this kind of circumnavigates a lot of those rabbit holes that you face in other app builders where you're like, yo, Bolt, I want to build an application with Firebase storage and auth, and then it starts getting confused and then half your app changes and you're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the base level. This is the ground level. Let's lay that brick laying foundation. Now, here is the best part. If you want to see an entire video showing you how to integrate Firebase Auth, I'm going to leave it down in the description down below. It shows you how to do it on the database platform. Very simple. We're going to create our little Firebase project, integrate our keys, proceed. For now, though, the way I'm going to approach monetization in this application, I'm going to hit let's get started here as we build this application here, is going to be very much like if you're familiar with StockTwits or a freebie type of website where you land on the landing page, you get value, and then the way of monetization is purely like Google ads and the columns. So in this video, we're gonna be building out that landing page, our ability to mimic any brand, e.g. mimic, and then our monetization can occur in the left or right side column with the ads through AdSense on Google. Google. Also, if you're like, this guy's voice sounds a little weird. I'm a little sick, okay, give me a break. So here's a new user interface when it comes to data button, which is really cool and what I really like. First things first, as we always love with these AI agents, we got our little conversation on the right here. 
ask questions, make code changes, et cetera. The biggest change here that I fundamentally don't see in any other platform is this right here. The idea being we have in progress to do and then done. This right here is 100% correlated with real software development. As I create my own software company, this is very much like a situation where, for example, create basic analytics and history tracking. This is what we would call a story or as they call them here, task. The idea is very much rather than us putting one prompt here and this thing just gets going and yeah, 80% of the code base is just different now. We are granularizing each task so that the AI agents like, okay, what's the task? And it only does it when it's in the in progress area and it waits for a confirmation for us to put it in done. Basically, this is the next level in the sense of I have an AI agent coding out my software and the position I'm taking is a manager role. That's why data abundance says you don't need to find a CTO because now you're the CTO. So here's the situation though. So right now we got our task one MM-1 here of creating a landing page that showcases Mimic's core value proposition. But as I stated earlier, I want to kind of just do a different type of software web app where we're just kind of in the value right off the bat. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click this and I'm going to change a little bit of this. Also of these pre-generated tasks here, it's a really great opportunity for you to understand maybe the best way to formulate wording when asking for a task to be done. For now though, let's just get this going here so I can show some other features of this application. Then we're going to connect an OpenAI API key for the functionality of our value for our platform. Obviously that could be Gemini, DeepSeek or whatever you want. But here, let's hit start task and it's going to be in progress here. Now the one thing about our AI agents here is clarity. The idea is very much like what the heck is it doing right now? And then you can come over here and be like, okay, it's working on MIM-1. And it's going to walk you through its entire thought process of how it's approaching it with the file listed. Thought for a moment, let me install the necessary packages and check the current app TSX content. And kind of goes down this chain of thought. Notice, I asked for one task to be done and it's doing that task. It's not doing all these. It's not just shooting off, shooting off, shooting off, shooting off. And you're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa like where is the control? That's what's key here. That's fundamentally what makes these AI agents very valuable as this is real workflow in a software company. If I was going to have an employee do a task and then for some reason they're doing task MIM5, what are you doing? No, 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 no. I just told you to do MI-1. So that's the idea here. Do what you need to do. Don't overdo. Is that a saying? Do I need to sell that on a shirt? <laughs> and as I stated before, when approaching stories or in this context, this would be kind of like pushing a PR to GitHub. It gives me the relevant information of what they even changed on this specific push. Stuff like feature section with three key benefits using cards, strong CTA section with gradient background, etc. Also notice at the end of a task, it identifies the specific task that it just did. Now when a task is done for us to preview at least the front end changes in this context, we can come up here to preview and look at this. Pretty cool. I think the great thing about this is that it instantly renders the exact UI rather than us going through terminal and having to start this. And if I scroll down here, we have a nice little landing page of your brand voice amplified by AI. Scroll down here, how Mimic works, analyze brand voices, generate content, share and export, and a good footer. All done within a couple seconds. Now, obviously right now the sign-in button doesn't work or functionality doesn't work because that's not what we requested here. But what's really cool is we have a really good starting point here. I kind of like this idea of me putting in like Wendy's there and hitting try now. So let's keep going here. When you like what you see, hit mark is done. There we go. And what's great is this is going to keep a nice little catalog of all of our past tasks. Pretty cool. As now we can identify very specific labor for these AI agents to incur. Now we have other specific tasks that were automatically given to us that we could try out, such as set up Firebase authentication and user profiles. But for now, we know our objective. So we're going to create our own task here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say new page for Mimic capabilities. I'm going to create task here. We're going to get the bigger UI here. Here we go. And just so I can confirm what's going on here, I'm going to go to this page right here and notice how the button says try now. And this is very important. This is how you're going to be able to easily look through the code if you need to. So I'm going to hit edit code. And if I scroll all the way to the top here, it doesn't matter if you don't understand this because we could, in theory, ask our AI agent to help here. But we know it says try now as that's literally the only area it says try now. So what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to take this hero section I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hide code again. New page for movie capabilities. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, here, provide the relevant code. And what I'd like to do is I don't want to throw the whole sync at our AI agent to just do everything that we want it to do. Typically, let's make it step by step here. So what I like to do is I'm going to say, okay, here, I'm going to get the relevant code that I wanted to change or add another route to. So I provided that for the try now. And then I'm going to say, make it so when I add a company name here, we go to the new page slash mimic play, like in your URL. 
I'm gonna say start task. And what you know is gonna get going over here. This is kind of the workflow here where you can game plan and set up very specific directions you want our AI agent and data button to go in. Now, once it's done with a story, what's really cool is that it will accomplish it, right? And then you'll get a nice little output of everything it essentially did. But notice this, it says this page is set up with a split view layout showing the reference content on the left and the generated content on the right. Would you like me to make any adjustments to the layout or functionality? Basically, it's asking me, do I want to say this is good, we're done here, or make additional changes? First off, let's see if it even works. So we'll come over here, we'll say Apple, and the idea is that we hit try now, and we should be rendering into a new page. So try now. There we go. Mimic play, really nice. And what's actually really cool here is that it has a dynamic field for the title. So it says generate content in Apple style. I assume if I change that, let's try Nike. It should say Nike. Nice, okay, cool, it does. And then we have a nice little description here, reference content from brands, tweets, product descriptions, etc. That's actually very fundamental here. This shows us that wireframe that I gave at the beginning of the tutorial. It wasn't just like, oh, provide a file and then we'll never look at it again. It is referencing that file it is using that as a baseline, that's key. So now the idea here is that I'm gonna provide reference content and then we're gonna generate content that is similar to that in the brand style. And then if we took this one step further to add monetization to this underlying platform, the left side and the right side of this underlying UI, we could add like Google AdSense ads. For now though, I like where we're at. I'm gonna hit done again. As typically what I like to do is every fundamental feature change, we can go ahead and just mark it as done so we know that this is the situation on the newer feature change. That's cool. Let's go back to preview. Let's go to our page mimic play here and let's add a little bit of code change. So as you already know, the way I like, especially setting up stories or tasks for our AI agent is reference the specific code or functionality you wanna change. To be honest with you, when I give stories to my software engineers, I will show them the specific code files where I want them to change. I'll give them context of what should change, what function, what underlying line, et cetera, so let's treat our AI agents as software engineers because essentially that's what they are, which is kind of crazy. We're in the future. So what I mean by this is that my next objective here is I want to integrate an open AI API key. Why? So that when I hit generate content, it references this and outputs here. Therefore, we need to get the relevant block code for here and here. Now, in theory, you don't have to go to the exact code if you don't want to look for it. You could basically copy all this code or we could reference the specific file. So for example, if I create the new task here and we'll just say add open AI API functionality and then we hit create task, then in theory, we could paste the entire code file here if you're not comfortable compartmentalizing it like I have shown. But to be honest with you, it's very simple, y'all. All you need to do is go to preview and basically watch this, you know, reference content, command C, control C, edit code, command F, control F, find everywhere it says reference content and that's the specific code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply go to main content here and what you'll notice, which is really nice about these AI agents is that they give these little like content area, main content. This is comments and code and basically it's not read in software, but it gives you insight on like, this is where the main content's located. Come up here, this is where the navigation's located. Really nice, like, layman dictation. So coming back over here to plan, though, let's go to open AI API here. I'm going to say this. Okay, for this, provide the code. So now that all we have to do is, I'm going to say, okay, for this, give the relevant code that we want to add functionality to, navigation, et cetera. I'm going to come down here and say, let's integrate open AI API key so that when I click generate content, that little UI button, we run it through a prompt that will then make the content that is similar and output here in generate content, allowing me to copy. Generate content is the other right side here with the value. Hit start task. Now what this should do here is this should ask for my open AI API key. So let me go ahead and grab that. And there we go, makes it super simple for us. Let me start by requesting the open AI API key and creating a API endpoint. Perfect, so I just wanna paste it right there. Hit send and it locks it in. That's really nice. This makes it so when we integrate third-party applications, it's very simple for the AI agent just to be like, we just need the key, we'll handle everything else. As DJ Khaled once said, major key alert. And this is the workflow when building an application with data button. At the end here, I'm gonna show you how to deploy this, which is at a live website link, but it's very much like, here's a specific task, here's the information, go. And to be honest with you, this is very much the future of software development in the context of using AI agents, just because of the fact that in real software development, typically we do things called sprints, where we'll identify the labor for two weeks, 
And you can do something very similar here with this little to-do section. I think one really nice improvement that could happen to this platform is making this more of like a Kaban situation. We can drag it between columns. But for now, I, this is pretty solid, y'all. So now that's finished here. We're going to hit preview here. And I want you to notice something. We come over here to our left. Because we're integrating a third-party API, it made a new Python function here, content generation, using OpenAI's API key that we provided. What's really cool here, this is like next level, y'all. And I really like this because it's such a new field. But it made the prompt as well. Like it made the prompt. Here is some reference content that shows a brand style and tone. Generate new content that matches the style while being unique and original. So not only did it code out the entire file, but it also did the heavy lifting of making the prompt itself. I like it. So let's try it. Wendy's. Try now. Okay. I'm actually really curious if this works. <laughs> I think like this kind of tweet right here. Can't believe we're getting a TikTok ban before GTA 6. Let's see how it interprets this. Generate content. Okay. And then notice we have a little console log below us. So this shows all the relevant like payloads and everything being sent here. This actually looks like a hit. We're out here waiting for Bigfoot sightings while everyone's losing minds over a potential Snapchat redesign. <laughs> see, that's a little bit on brand right there. Like you want to see like Apple putting that out, but you could see Wendy's putting that out. It got that. So now that we know it works with Wendy's, I got to give McDonald's some love. So let's try McDonald's. I bet... Being an ice cube and McDonald's Sprite feels so good. Oh gosh. How is it going to interpret this? <laughs> Generate content. Get a little shot off here. Here we go. I reckon turning into a golden fry in a McDonald's Happy Meal brings ultimate joy. Okay, okay. Not bad. That's the idea though. And I think that's actually really cool. Like we were able to integrate a third party API with just one click, one story, go. So your next question might be, okay, this is cool, Corbin, but how do I put this at a live website link? In traditional software development, this would require us to identify the exact project we need to use, put in a bunch of terminal commands, make sure everything is associated in our EMV file, a bunch of steps. Here, it's just one click go. So we find where the URL of the app should be going to. So I'm going to rename this to Mimic App here and hit deploy app. And it just gets going. This is fundamentally a lot less work than a bunch of terminal commands. I also want to point out as well, remember when we gave that Stripe UI to check out, it did take into account making the title and that gradient feel that is very much within Stripe. So that's pretty cool. And the gradient feel down here as well. While this is deploying, good job. We've added OpenAI API functionality with just one simple task. We have successfully deployed the application. Let's go and see it. And with just those simple steps, we've successfully created software with AI agents and deployed it to a live website link. So we can jump in here, check it out. Put in a company name, Nike, just do it. One thing I want to point out as well that's really nice about Data Button and is very annoying in front end development that it just handles for you is its ability to handle responsiveness in an application. So I can go to tablet here, really nice UI. Notice how it makes it a column. I go to mobile here, same situation. This kind of functionality when it comes to UI being so easily transferred between the different types of devices, this is not normal. I've been doing front end development for a while, and that's probably the most annoying thing to code out but this handles it flawlessly. But there you go. I'm gonna make sure you leave a link to data button in the description down below. This is a brand new update. It came out yesterday. Pretty fun here. You can check out these AI agents, how we associate labor and tasks, but without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Data button, two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.